So next up, we've got one more tech talk from Fabiano, who's going to lead us through the evolution of web design and uh, tell us how we got to today, where we have this really amazing, diverse, powerful suite of tools that designers and developers are using. So go ahead, Fabiano. So hi, my name is Fabiano, and I'll be talking about the history of web design, the development of web development, and where we've been and where we're going towards. Uh, so I created a timeline that to guide us through all just 30 plus years of web design. And what you're going to go and notice is that most of the concepts and technologies and tools that we use throughout history, they don't go away. And just like in every regular print design, they are just improved, adapt, and we still use them uh, today. We're going to start in the 80s uh, where there was no graphic user interface. It was basically a black screen and design were made by symbols and tabulation. And an example of this is the terminal. And this reinforces what I just said about uh, the ideas being used today. And now we jump to 1991, uh, where HM, HTML was born. HTML is the standard markup language for creating web pages. Back then, it was text-based websites with inline links and also in a single column only. An example of that is the first, the famous first web page that most of you already know. Now we go to 1995, where tables and HTML 2.0 was introduced, and the idea here was to simulate a newspaper. Browsers now could display images and the structure was made, were made, uh, was made with tables and tables within tables that could align images or items vertically, could be defined in pixels or percentages, and we could finally have multiple columns. It was also introduced, uh, the introduction to GIFs. This was the beginning of the developers grudged for front end because tables were too fragile to maintain and adding a new piece of information like a role could break the entire table. The concept of block design was also born where pages were divided in blocks, as you can see. Also the concept of slicing design. Designers would provide the artwork and it was up to the developer to figure out how to convert that into a web page. That's when Micromedia Fireworks came to life and made slicing very easy. By this time, designer principles were set aside in favor to what looked more advanced. Uh, in still in 1995, but in late 1995, a prototype-based or object-oriented script language was released, the JavaScript. It was like a cry for help for developers to assist with the HTML annotations. He added interact, interaction to pages like pop-up alerts. Moving forward a little bit, in the 2000s, JavaScript brought a significant advancement to the web design with drop-down menus, forms, and user-created content like blogs and photo collections. And a fun fact, uh, you probably guys uh, remember the page counters were famous and they were a thing in the late 90s and early 2000s. Every single page would have something like that. In 1996, Macromedia Flash became fab, uh, popular. It came to break all the limitations and started the concept of splash pages. A design could use now shapes, animations, fonts, sounds, almost anything. The downsides were the latest Flash plugin was always required all the time, every day. Also, uh, long loading times because many of, the, many of the websites were loading in a single Flash file. And that took a lot of processing power consumption. A new type of developer was also born from this, the Flash developers. And since we are in this topic, I'm just gonna fast forward for a second to 2007 when the first iPhone was released and Apple decided not to support Flash. So that's when the popularity of Flash started to decay. And here are some examples of Flash websites. 
So in 1998, the cascading style sheets were introduced. It separated content from presentation, but browser support took a few years and it was very buggy. And I remember myself when I started to, I tried to learn CSS and it was very frustrating to me and I gave up totally on it <laughs> until a few years uh, ago that I, I'm here now with web development. Uh, CSS3 was uh, arrived in 1999 and it was divided into separate modules. So different features were arriving along the years. For example, the CSS animations were only published in 2009 and media queries only in 2012. And here's just an example of the CSS, uh, CSS syntax. In 2007, the smartphones came to life and became popular. And with them many different screens, it would take lots of data usage to load desktop websites into a phone. And during this time, the birth of the 960 pixel grid system and the 12 column layout happened. Uh, developers began to create mobile alternative versions of the websites. And I think you remember the mobile dot that will appear in the URL address bar whenever you try to load a website on your phone. In 2010, we finally started to think about responsive design. The idea was very different layouts for the same exact content. The designers had to create multiple layouts and the developers had to think about how to optimize and the semantics of those designs and code. And here's just an example of how many different screen sizes and proportions we have out there. Uh, also, uh, web frameworks became popular and Bootstrap is by far the most popular frame, front end framework. Also, we have JavaScript frameworks show, uh, that showed up like Ember, Angular, Backbone, Knockout. It was, a very, it was the beginning of the MVC model, uh, the model controller view. Single, pages, single page applications and lots and lots of data binding. Here is also when design became flat. And now since 2014, uh, web development has given a big step into flexibility and control. There is still a lot of browsers to, uh, to catch up for browsers to catch up, but we are moving uh, uh, in a faster pace than we used to. So CSS was introduced many concept, new concepts uh, like viewport view and viewport height, as well flexbox to deal with, with easy manipulation of the block model. Most recently, the CSS grid layout has been incorporated to browsers and it is a two-dimensional grid-based uh, layout system. Uh, we also have web components, which is a way to extend HTML in this functionality with custom elements, imports, and templates. And React.js that renders the user interface Java, uh, that is a render user interface JavaScript framework. It was created by Facebook and reinforces the concept of single page applications. And for more information of those last topics, uh, I believe that every single one of them, except for CSS grid layout, I'm not sure, they all have like tech talks specifically about them in full, uh, full stack website. So you guys can check that out. And that's it for today. And I personally can wait to see what web design is going to the next few years. Thank you. Very cool, Fabiano. I think um, that was a great summary of kind of the history of web design and pair that with J uh, Jamie's talk. It's, it reminded me, because the first thing you started with was no GUI. And again, we're back in the world of um, chatbots and voice commands where they're, we're, we're GUI-less, right? And so I often think like, are we at the end of history or at the beginning of history with in terms of web development? I think in terms of like how we've, like the Gmail type applications, we've, to me, React is the the final answer in that in that world. But in terms of other things like VR, chat, voice, we're at the beginning of so many things, and I'm curious what will be the frameworks that will pop up to help developers do that kind of stuff, right? Because I'm sure right now, um, writing those kind of applications, we're still at the 
you know, very early stage, like A-Frame. A-Frame, I mean, I think captures a lot of interesting ideas, but we're, I think we're kind of in the flash era of that of right now instead of where we'll be in 10 years. So applications will be the kind that people want to and, uh, and have to build.